I'm gonna do a professional brightness test here by shining them at myself and seeing if I can open my eyes. Barely. I'm Adam and that's Diesel. He's from the desert, I think, or at least that's where he was found wandering around by himself. So I adopted him and now he's a beach dog. It was always my dream to move from England to live in sunny Southern California and now here I am. My goal is to inspire people just like you to chase your dreams and most importantly, get out there and find your everyday adventure. What's up guys, welcome back to another episode. If you saw last week's episode, you will know, wait, no, not last week, the week before, you will know that I have just bought this, which is a 2004 KTM 950 Adventure, and I'm gonna be building this thing into a badass, like, touring commuter adventure bike. Basically, if I ever need to go anywhere on two wheels, this is gonna be the way that I do it. Now, today is a bike day, so not only am I testing out some LED spotlights so that I can light up the road when I'm riding, or the trails if I'm off road and also be seen by traffic because that is very important especially here in LA where the traffic is crazy but I also have a meeting with a company called Rottweiler Performance they make performance parts for these bikes and we're going to talk today about how we can make this thing rip even more than it already does so stay tuned come along for the ride and let's get into it Welcome to Rottweiler. Hey, how you doing? Adam. Scott. Yes. Adam. Nice to meet you, man. Yeah, you too. Yeah, you too. welcome. Well, guys, welcome to Rottweiler Performance. I just want to introduce you to Chris. This is the owner. And then this is Scott. So this is the marketing guru. And they're just going to give me a little show around the shop. And as you can see, they have got some ridiculous things in here. So uh, buckle up. We're going to go see some pretty sexy machines. This is my first time visiting Rottweiler, and I had no idea about the scale of their operation. Chris was telling me he started out by making a custom air intake for his own personal bike. He had no intention of selling it and certainly didn't expect to make any more. After trying it out on a friend's adventure bike and realizing that it also fit that, his friend decided to post it on the forums and before Chris knew what had hit him, he was getting orders faster than he could make them. Fast forward to today and he now has a rapidly expanding business specializing in aftermarket performance parts. The facility is huge and boasts a fully stocked race shop with every tool you can imagine. The most beautiful dyno cell I think I've ever seen. It's fully sealed and soundproofed so they can run bikes all day long and not piss off the neighbors. They also have a machine shop with state-of-the-art lathes, lasers, CNC machines, as well as a fabrication shop and an assembly area. Plus, they have a huge warehouse where they actually stock their own parts. I do love success stories like this and I'm a big proponent of supporting local businesses, so I'm very excited to be working with Rottweiler on this KTM build. Oh, and most importantly, they have a pet squirrel. <laughs> so this little guy, oh yep, hey dude, <laughs> this guy's got some issues, oh. but he's a good dude. Hey buddy. So you see that he's a little sideways. Yeah. So this poor guy, when he was a little guy, he fell out of a tree oh. with his sister. Man. Yep, you can pet him. And we started sticking him on uh, Instagram. People loved him. Yeah. And he got attacked by a hawk one day. And when hawks hit him, they try to concuss him. Right. Bang, they hit him. And so he doesn't walk very well. Oh. He just probably has some head trauma. He loves blueberries, loves walnuts. Yeah. And uh, How old is he? He's probably eight months. Yeah, he's a good dude. Hey, as if I didn't like the company and you guys enough, you love animals. That's yep. like a huge thing for me. Yeah. yeah. Once we finished the shop tour, we sat down and had a good old chat about what we were going to do with my KTM. Once that was over, I headed back home to do some modifications of my own. Okay, well, it is, in fact, tomorrow. Yesterday, I went to see Rottweiler. That is the clip that you just saw. And today, we are going to be looking at those LED lights that I talked about. So I have three different ones, all from Amazon. None of them were over $60. I'll link all of them in the description so you can check them all out. I also bought this cool relay thing that will actually strobe them. I will actually strobe them. So hopefully I'll be able to wire that up and show you. But essentially what that means is if I'm commuting in traffic, I can actually set it to strobe and it will flash the yellows kind of like one side and then the other and then like do some funky stuff and it'll just make me more visible to traffic. So welcome friends to Science with Adam. I have jerry-rigged up this test circuit, which uh, I know if you're an electrician, you are gonna be absolutely livid with me, but it works, so shush, and just let me enjoy the fact that I was able to figure this out. Because what I have here is that relay that allows me to strobe the lights. 
And using this switch that will go on the handlebars, I can not only turn them on, but I can also make them strobe, which I'm very excited about, the fact that I figured that out all by myself. So these are the quad LEDs, so these are the just the yellows. And so as you can see, they do the strobey thing. Now, what I do have on my system of uh, professionalism is I have both of them linked up to one side of the strobe controller. So actually, what will happen when I've got it all wired in properly is these will alternate. So they wigwag between each other, and then they do like one, two, three, four, both, both, one, two, three, three, four, both, both. So that means that they will be very, very visible. Now, these are, like I said, the yellow quads. So these can only do yellow. And I'm gonna do a professional brightness test here by shining them at myself and seeing if I can open my eyes. Barely. Now these do kind of like a spotlight. So if you look at the spot that they create, then it's like two little circles. Pretty good, pretty bright. These ones are, let me tell you, $53.99. Okay, so these are the smallest ones that I bought. So these are just a single LED. They're in this quite cool looking casing. They've got like a, a little shroud around it, some like zigzags cut in that look like teeth. They're, they're a cool looking light. They're definitely a lot more uh, stylish than those ones over there, but they are small. Now, the rating on those was 40 watt. These were cheaper, so these were only 32, no, 30.99. But it's saying that these are 60 watts. Even though it's only one LED rather than the four, it's claiming that the wattage is higher. So that is how bright they are. So these are actually like a cool flood. So I don't know if you can see that on the wall, but they're actually more like a rectangular shape. So a much wider beam. Now, if I look at these when they're white, they're pretty bright. Yeah, no, they're bright. I would say these are as bright, oh my God, yeah. I would say these are as bright as the quad lights. So let's see how the yellow looks. Same thing, uh, so you've got this cool wide beam spread, which I actually like. I think I prefer that to the spotlight. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, you see, weirdly, even though these are only one LED, I would say these are actually brighter than those quads. All right, so finally we have these ones. So these are the quad LEDs, but they also do white and yellow. So, white, da -da. Uh, let's see what the beam spread is like. Wow, okay, so these are brighter than the small ones for sure. Uh, again, it's that flood, so I like that. I like the fact that it's gonna light up more of the road. These are definitely brighter than those yellow ones, uh, than, sorry, than the, the small ones. And I wired in a second switch, so now I can switch between white and yellow. Oh wow, yeah that they are brighter. So these were 65.99, so these actually were more expensive than the quads and double the price of the single LEDs. Now, are they doubly bright? No, they're not. So if you are looking for some spots and you don't want some like big goofy quads on there, I don't care, this bike's kind of rugged looking and you know, four LEDs, whatever. It really doesn't bother me as long as they're brighter. But if you are looking for something in a much more compact package, those singles, I would definitely recommend them because look at the size difference. Both of these are about the same size as one of the quads. All right, cool. So I think that concludes it then. I'm gonna go with these on the bike, the big quads, because they're the brightest. So let's get these fitted. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll go down to Gustin, we'll get them to wire them in. One of the other cool things that I've added to the bike are these double take mirrors. So the stock mirrors are kind of ugly, these like big Mickey Mouse looking things. So I'm getting rid of these and replacing them with the double take system, which is really cool because it's actually built off of a Ram mount. So Ram is a company that makes all kinds of different mounts, but they're very simple. So all they do is just run this right here, which is just one adjustment screw. You undo that. And then once I've undone that, I can then change this to any pretty much orientation that I want. Forwards, backwards, left, right, you name it. I can fold them down and away. I can fold them in. I can have them sticking up like a 80 year old on Viagra, like whatever I want. Very excited to see how these do on the road, uh, but double take, thank you very much. I'm going to be testing the hell out of these. All right, cool. So I just got to wait for these uh, brackets to dry before I can put the lights on. So let's go now to Gustin and see what it looks like once we get there. So here we are, Gustin Motorsports. We've got Graham right now who's wiring up the bike and we are gonna see what these LED headlights look like. Last night I was going over it in my mind trying to figure out if I could actually get the two lights to do that wigwag strobe that I was telling you about where the left one and the right one would be independent. 
but without adding another switch, which I already have two on the handlebars, I don't think I wanna add one more, it would just be too much. So they're still gonna strobe, but they're both gonna do it at the same time, which honestly is better than nothing at all. Um, so right now we have the switches set up here. So the top one is gonna be for my white or yellow, and then the bottom one is gonna be on continuous or strobe. Right now, the bike has only been touched by this gentleman's fair hands. So once I bought the bike, I bought it in here. Graham went through everything and Eric as well, who's the other mechanic here. They went through everything and basically, yeah, got it all dialed in. So now it is honestly riding like a brand new bike and I love it. So we'll be back in a second. Hopefully with some illumination on these bad boys. So we're done, but with a slight problem. As I said, these lights did come from China. They're Amazon lights. They weren't the most expensive. And while they were working when I was testing them yesterday, and they were working while Graham was wiring them all up, once we got finished, pretty much, uh, the whites work and the yellow, this one doesn't. For no reason, we've checked everything and it is just the yellow setting on this light. But the whites are working, so we can have them on white and the strobe as well. Yeah, look at that. And that will be on both sides. Now, luckily Amazon do have a very good return policy, so they are sending me through another set. And so we'll just swap out this one when it comes to it, but it is done. Thank you so much, mate, for getting that sorted and Thank you. grinning and bearing through all of that. Uh, so let's go out on a ride now. Obviously we're not gonna be able to use the yellows, but we do have the whites. Let's go out on a little night ride and see just how bright these are. All right, so it's pretty windy, so I'm not sure how much you're actually going to be able to hear me. But let me show you the difference. So right now, all I have on is my regular headlight. This is a factory headlight from KPM. Now, if I put on my spotlight on white, that's yellow. <laughs> that is ridiculous. They are so bright. Oh my God. As you can see, they do like a really nice white glow. I mean, it is shocking just how bad the standard headlight is compared to these. I mean, the difference is incredible. Five dollars a gallon right now. You think this guy's really into fashion? Fashion light. And just like that, we are back. What an awesome first start to modifications on the bike. Super excited because I've done a lot of car mods, but I've never actually spent the time to modify a bike. I've done a few bits and bobs here and there, but this is gonna be my first full-blown project and uh, I can't wait. It's an absolute beast. I love these lights. The mirrors look great now and the, uh, the windscreen as well. So yeah, it's definitely all coming together. And since I went and did that meeting with the guys at Rottweiler, we have actually figured out exactly how we're gonna partner up what we're gonna to do to the bike, and there are some very exciting things coming, including getting this on that gorgeous dyno cell that they have there at the shop. So we're gonna see exactly how much power this makes, and then we're gonna throw on some goodies and make even more. So uh, yeah, super stoked. I hope you guys have enjoyed the bike episode. There will be a lot more to come. Obviously I need to get this thing on the dirt as well. Uh, and I'm also gonna look up some race schools or at least some off-road riding schools because I have only ever been self-taught and I would love to get on a track or a trail and actually get some proper instruction so that I can really put this thing through its paces. So yeah, anyway, like I said, lots to come guys, lots to come. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have, please smash that thumbs up button. That really helps with the whole YouTube algorithm thing. If you aren't subscribed, please subscribe because I would love to see you here again. And remember, until next time, don't do anything I won't do. See ya. Oh, 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 oh,